Speaker, our kids need to memorize the times tables, and that just ain't happening. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, back to the disaster of the disaster recovery program. Here's a story of how Landlink is dealing with the minister's order to start closing files. Richard Murray of High River started repairing his home on September the 23rd after getting permission in writing from Landlink to do so. He followed every step required and kept Landlink in the loop throughout. He was told on November 23rd that all of his paperwork was in order. So he waited for payment. On March 11th, he got a phone call from Landlink. His claim has been denied in full, without explanation. Is this how the minister intends to close Mr. all... Honourable Minister. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the honourable member knows uh, flat out that that's uh, an, an, uh, an outrageous, outrageous statement. There have been 4,600, almost 4,700 payments to individuals, totaling $48 million dollars since uh, since this disaster recovery pro program started and you know if there are ca individual cases I encourage the honorable member to share them we will we will put them into the system and make sure that they're they're reviewed I encourage individuals who have a concern with the DRP file to uh, go through the appeal process as well first supplemental What's outrageous is this minister still hasn't fired Landlink. Richard Murray's yeah, yeah. circumstances are not unique. All over southern Alberta, homeowners victimized by the flood are being re-victimized by Landlink. We're now getting multiple reports that if a homeowner challenges or appeals any part of the DRP process, all DRP payments are put on hold. So if you think the DRP got one little thing wrong, you get no further money or anything until the dispute is resolved. That makes me think that Landlink is being paid commission on the money that they don't pay out. To the minister, hmm. is Landlink being paid to shortchange flood victims? Honorable Minister Municipal Affairs. Mr. Speaker, uh, that is um, actually a very irresponsible statement. Uh, you know, uh, this, this government is committed to supporting Albertans in ways that no other province could ever afford to do. And we will be there for Albertans. We'll deliver it through the Disaster Recovery Program, and we will ensure that Albertans are looked after. If there are details, if there are concerns that individual Albertans have, there's a process by which it will be resolved, and we're here to see it through for Albertans. Second supplement. Nothing to hide, he would table the contract, and I've been asking him to do that. This government has called last June's flood a $6 billion event, yet in the community where more homes were destroyed than in all the other com communities combined, less than $23 million has actually flowed through to homeowners who were devastated by the flood. The people most hurt are seeing nothing, but there seems to be plenty of money for companies that manage to score sole source contracts from the government Shame. to the minister. How much has Landlink been paid so far as a result of the 2013 uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd be very happy to table that information in this House. My understanding is that the administrative costs for delivering the disaster recovery program is in the order of magnitude of 11 percent of payout. That actually compares very favorably to the insurance industry, which is about a 24, 25 percent, over 20 to 25 percent. Uh, cost of delivering the payout. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to make that information available and, uh, and we'll go right back to the last 20 years of DRP payments uh, and, and make that information available.